I'm actually cracking up over here because most white men want anorexic crackhead skinny girls. And I have just literally never been that. So black men always approached me because apparently meat doesn't scare them. Truer words have never been spoken. Behind every thick white woman, there's a black guy. My uncle, God rest the dead, only dated white women. They were either thick, plump, or fat. I think it's a black thing. We just, we, we like meat. I mean, we like chicken. You know what I'm saying? We like chicken, so. Pause, damn. I didn't catch that first one I said. We like meat. But you know what I'm saying? We like a little bit of... We like them, listen, when we younger, we like them with some glutes. We like that glutus maximus. We like them healthy. We like them healthy. But then as you get older, 40, 50, you know what I mean? She got to have the big mama arms. And I told you about the big mama arms. The big mama arms means that she could throw down in the kitchen. You know something that's crazy too? Anytime I see a video of a Caucasian woman in the kitchen mixing up some type of concoction, she be skinny. She be skinny. I don't think I've ever seen any one of them cooking videos where the chicken don't got no seasoning and the woman doing the cooking be big. I might have just made a discovery. My short kings. My short kings. The reason why I'm calling out all the short kings is because in the comment section of this video, the young lady left a comment and she said, that's my boyfriend. Now, you can go back and rewatch the video. She got at least six or seven inches over this man. My short kings. Yeah, well, I think my friend is trying to recruit me to join her to join her marriage with her, her husband or something. I don't know. I might be taken. But it just be the little stuff she be saying and she be talking about like having another um having another girl join. Like just be with them and they all just be together like a big happy family. And I be listening to her talk about like, oh okay, I mean if that floats your boat then, you know, toodles to you. You know, I don't know what to say. Like, I just be listening to her, and I'm like, oh, okay, woo. And then she be like, yeah, you know, if you need anything, um, you good. Like, my husband said you good. He always got you, woo. You ain't got to worry about nothing. And I be, look, I be like, what she mean? Like, you ain't got to worry about nothing. And why your husband got me for, like, I mean, I get, like, when we go to the club together and shit like that. He be bad and drink some bottles. But it just randomly you telling me like he got we not out in the club or nothing. I don't know. I might be tweaking. I don't know. I, I'm probably. I'm probably nah, you ain't tweaking. You, them folks be out here recruiting like NBA scouts. They be out here recruiting. I got two situations that I can tell y'all about. So one situation, you guys know my wife is an esthetician. My wife has a lot of clients. And the thing about being an esthetician is the clients, they confide in you. You're like their therapist. So one of her clients told her that she has an open marriage. And when I say open marriage, it means that her and her husband are part of the Pineapple Society. They be partaking in threesomes. She explained to my wife how the whole thing went down and how fun it is and all that. So when my wife told me this, immediate red flag. Antenna started flaring up. I'm like, it sounded like she trying to throw hints. Of course, my wife being naive going to tell me that I'm thinking too deep into it. She think I was tripping. Okay. Then, the husband started coming and getting facials. And I'm like, hmm. Interesting. Actually, you know what? I'm lying. It was the other way around. It was the husband getting the facials first, and then his wife started coming in there. You know, she was more open in conversation with... My wife, that's how it was. That's where like the red flag started popping up. Cause to me it sounded like he saw something he was interested in and he sent the scout out to go collect. 
it's crazy how how slick they move too. It went from that to inviting her out to dinner, which my wife never went. And then this is where, you feel me? Because the whole time I'm telling her like, yo, I'm telling, they trying to recruit you. One day, I believe I took her and my son out to dinner and the lady hit her up, right? The wife hit her up. Hey, what you doing? You know, what, what you got going on today? My wife told her she's out with the family. We went to dinner. So Shorty was like, okay, that's cool. You know, I'm just out here at the pool. And then she sent a picture. She sent a picture. And the type of picture it was, cuz. First off, let me side note. Her body was bodying, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Her body was bodying. But when she sent the picture, right? And I know how my wife is. She's she just... She's extra. She's extra, bro. When I say she's extra, she's extra. She's boop. And then she was like, I'm like, who, who sent you that? And then she started laughing. And she's like, maybe you were right. Shorty was throwing a whole bunch of bait. And, you know, Danae wasn't biting. And eventually, it became weird. And now, they don't come to get facials anymore. <laughs> the other thing I can say is, one of my coworkers told me that one of his friends came across a video of his wife, you know, getting tag team by a husband and wife. The husband was taking her to Stroke City and the wife was assisting. I still know it's a few of y'all that watch these videos religiously that aren't subscribed. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram and make sure you got the notification bell selected to all. That way you can get all the notifications when I upload these videos. Stop playing with me. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get right. You tell a girl don't have a baby because she broke. Next thing you know, she's bringing up you. Well, you had a baby when you were broke. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I had to do to feed my son? Mm-hmm. You don't want to know. I promise you don't. I promise. I want to know. I mm -hmm. promise. It got nasty. It got filthy. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Ho, ho, I hate when you try to tell somebody. Ho, ho, ho. Where did the TH come from in promise? I promise... Some they bring up, well, you don't you think I'm telling you this from experience? Don't you think I'm telling you this for a reason? Cause I've been through it. Mm-hmm. Preach. Girl, you already don't got no toilet paper. Mm. What you doing? Think about having a baby. What we talking about? Mm-hmm. Then they start bringing up this eugenics word. I don't know Eugene, but I know if you can't afford to wipe your butt, you can't afford no baby. Thank you. Kids are very expensive. Them diapers, them folks gonna run through them diapers. Formula, well, you know, it depends if you put your child on formula, but formula is expensive. Now, I'm just talking about them when they babies. Now, even when they grown, I'm letting you know right now, even when they grown, you still need to be in the position to help your child. My pops, right? I don't need nothing from my pops. But what I love about my father is I might sit here and talk about something. And I've noticed that my wife father does this also. So it's not just my pops. I might talk about something. Or my wife might talk about something. And then one day we'll come home and we'll see it in the mail. Like the other day I was talking about the, um, well, not the other day. <laughs> this black people measurement. Jesus Christ. Uh, black people measurement. Three years ago, I was talking about getting that watch. I don't have it on my hand right now, but the Galaxy Watch. And my pops was like, what does it do? Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. And he's into technology and stuff like that. I come home one day from work and there's a box in front of the door. He went and bought the watch for me because I was talking about it. Little things like that. It's expensive monetarily, but also mentally. It's mentally expensive to have children. It's a lot of grown adults running around this place with childhood trauma. They're not right in the head. They, they, they can't live righteous lives as adults because their parents were mentally broke. I could say mentally broken, but I'm trying to use a play on words. They were mentally broke. They did not have the funds mentally to raise children. Let that sit in your spirit. Having a child is one of the most important responsibilities that you will take on as a human being. As women talk about y'all, we sorry, we don't, uh, uh, women know a duck when she see a duck. I mean, they quack so loud. I don't know, because she I might mean, be a duck, too. <laughs> they quacking together. Huh? They quacking together, but women, that's, you said some people are personality, some people want money. Yeah. The women, they know, I mean, they smell it. It's like a goat. Oh, it's yeah, a yeah, skill yeah, yeah, women yeah, pick yeah. up. Yeah. And they, oh.
with money. Hold on, yeah, they say yes. yeah, they know the money, the, the, who they can get easy, who they can get women okay. when they see a group of niggas. Women yeah. move so swiftly. I'm a yeah. woman. They yeah. Me and my wife had this conversation before. She has literally said this out her mouth. Yo, if I was that type of woman, I would take advantage of a lot of these niggas. And she was explaining how you could see, I'm going to use the word simp. She was like, how you can see a simp coming from a mile away. They move up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can size up the crew. <laughs> mm -hmm. You size up the crew from a distance. Mm -hmm. And it ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. But don't go for the, the loudest. It's the worst one. The, the worst. The loud one. The loud one. Or the cute one. Excuse us. Yes. <laughs> the loud one. The loud one. The loud one. The loud one. Oh, that cute one. He might be a little. You know, you gotta watch him for real. He's standing on his baby mama couch yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. He's standing on her couch right now. Moral of the story is don't be a duck. Have some morals about yourself. Regardless of what somebody have between their legs, you should not be letting anybody take advantage of you. No, I'll pay for it. You ain't paying for Dude, I didn't. Man, you ain't man, I didn't no. no, you did know. You just no, said you know. If I know, I wouldn't have came to man, that other man house. Man, I would have never came to another man house. Yeah, you did. You is. This is my house. You said it right. Another man house. My house. Yeah. Got this. I don't give a Alright, he obviously gotta have a strap on him. And even with him having a strap on him, you are getting too close to the other man. This is just one on one gun etiquette. Keep your distance. At the same time, why do you have the strap? I yeah, swear to God, God bro, you ain't You ain't You want me to talk to the f*** You want me to talk to the f*** off that I didn't? Get out of here, bro. Why is you still in here? Why is you still in here? You gotta go. Get the f*** out before I'm f*** you, bro. You let you want to still breathe because it's me. I'm letting you breathe. Get the f*** out of my crib, bro. You gotta go, too. Get the f*** Alright, so the reason why I was asking why do you have the strap out is because although you're upset, although your heart is broken in a million pieces, if you were to use that strap, or even the fact that you pulled that strap out, you are risking jail time. And to be honest with you, dog, it's not worth it. It is not worth it. No matter how hurt you are, you feel me? A broken heart is no excuse to take a life. Them words sound good, and the actions that follow might be a lot harder, but the moment... You you pull that trigger. Let's say you lay both of them down. Now you're going to be sitting in the pen for no reason. When you could have let her go about her merry way, let him have her, and replace her. Upgrade. What happens when you're driving to work and your car disappoints you? You upgrade. You get a better car. One with less problems, hopefully. The crazy thing is some of you get another car with more problems. But that's a conversation for another day. I love to use cars as analogy for a relationship. If you're new here, this is something I've been doing for a while. You don't want a partner with a lot of miles on it. Just like you don't go to the dealership and ask for a car with 100,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. I know you. Yeah. I'm like, where? I know. We went to high school together. Yeah. Yeah, no, we can't do this. <laughs> do what? what? in high school. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, what happened? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Here you. All right. Something All right. can happen. No, no. A lot. Oh, we chilling, we chilling. Mm -hmm. It was nice seeing you, though, friend. Uh, oh, yeah. cool. it was nice seeing you, though, friend. There you go. No, no. Yeah, what you doing mm -hmm. in high school? I Nothing. That's just, I just know her. Like, you know, like, that's nah. Weird. Like, nah, it's okay. That's weird. Huh? Nah, it ain't weird. No. 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 I know her. Yeah, we went to high school together. Is either she was a slide in high school or she broke my man heart to the point where he don't want nothing to do with her. Because the way he reacted is like, he know her resume. He know her poom poom facts. He don't have the printout, but he was there. That's crazy. If you went on one of these shows and a chick that played you in high school came on that show, are you spinning the block? Are you giving her some re revenge strokes? I know people, we are in our mid-30s now, who are still spinning the block on girls that played them in high school. I've always heard this, but it's true. When you want them, they look real good. As time progress, you know, people let themselves go. When they want you, they look busted up. They look done up. Done up, dirty. I might have went in on that, but it's the truth. And you know what? This goes for men and for women. I'm going to tell you why I say men, right? It's a lot of people that used to make fun of me when I was in school because, you know, I ain't had a clothes. I ain't had a whatever, whatever, right? 
not all of them, because, you know, some of them that did used to make fun of me have actually progressed in life. But it's a, it's a good bit of them. It's a good bit of them. I be on Facebook and I be watching. I be watching.